Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Clouveau. Today we will be making this Christmas handkerchief angel ornament. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. To make our Christmas handkerchief angel, we will start with a handkerchief. This kind is ideal. It has, you know, four edges of embroidery. This one's great. It has bells and a red edge, which I really like. And this one also is awesome. It has green, a green edge and embroidered little snowmen. I'm going to use this one because it's bigger. This handkerchief is about 11 inches square, which means that, that the dress part of the project is five and a half inches tall. I'm going to cut this across the center and then I'm going to cut about a two inch wedge from the center of one of the halves. Here my handkerchief is cut and ready to go. I did not have the heart to cut through the little embroidered snowmen, so I just went ahead and cut between them. These will be the sleeves. This project has sleeves and I know that this is plenty for a sleeve. So we're going to begin like this. This is the wrong side. This is the right side. And I'm going to just overlap and pin this here and here. But of course, stitching through only one, um, you know, one side. So through here and here, I'm going to join these stitching down through here and across here. And now that I have this pinned, and kind of overlapping just that little quarter of an inch. I also tried to match up the scallop here and I tried to show that <laughs> that third snowman there. But now I think I can just sew this on my machine. So I'm just going to machine stitch straight down. Okay, so this first side is stitched. And so for the second side, I'm going to do the same thing. Just sort of overlap this. Try not to cover the, the uh, snowman on the edge there and pin and stitch. My, my dress is ready and let's prepare the head and the underskirt. This is a 25 millimeter head bead and I've already made the face, and of course you can find the instructions for the face in my Focus on Faces video. Now I also have six inch tulle on the spool and one sixteenth inch satin ribbon. That's probably 18 inches. So I have two lengths, um, probably half a yard each, and this is also probably about a half a yard, and that's plenty. I'm going to tie this off in the center. And then I'm going to thread the ribbon through the bead from the bottom to the top. I always like to sort of, instead of just putting the glue on here, um, I like to get the tool sort of compacted a little bit by first sending it into the bead. And then it's a little bit, um, it's not as unruly when I add a little smudge of glue here to the back and then slide it back on. Just a little smudge of hot glue and then slide it back on. And I'm feeling here for the knot right there and I'm making sure that the, the tool doesn't pop all the way out. And so there we go, she's ready to go. Now for her dress, I'm just going to gather up around the top edge. I'm not folding this under, I'm not trimming it. I'm just going to gather through about a quarter of an inch from the top edge. I have a double strand of white quilting thread and I like to use a thimble. And I'm just gonna start in the back center. I have a nice generous knot because 
it's easy to pull the knot all the way through and I don't want to do that. And then I'm just going to do a running stitch through a single layer, generous about quarter inch long stitches. There's no secret to it, just gather it up. And then I'm back to where I started. Approximately the back center. I'll, I'll draw that up just to make sure that I don't have any catches or kinks or knots in the thread. And then gently sort of open it up and insert the angel. Oops, my knot came undone. Here we go. Or did I, maybe I didn't even tie this off. Of course, I want to tie this off the top for a hanging loop. There we go. Now I'm going to arrange this so that this center panel is right in front of her chin and then pull it tight. Wrap it a few times, pull it tight and then stitch back and forth a few times. You can go side to side, back to front, whatever you like. I'm going to knot that off in the back. Okay, that looks good. This is gonna be cute. Every um, handkerchief has its own little quirks, right? And you just kind of want to work with the quirks. That looks good. Now let's do the sleeves. You know, this project, this angel has sleeves. So we're going to take these two pieces. Make sure you have the right side up and just wrap them like this. So I like for this, um, like the edge, mm, how can I explain? The finished edge to come around the top like this. So this snowman are sort of right side up. And then this will be like this. And I'm going to overlap them, you know, about half an inch or so like that. And I'm going to sew from here to here, along here, and along here. And this time I will use, I will sew by hand. I'm just going to do a little running stitch from here to here. And from here to here. So this edge will be the cuff of the sleeve and I like to start here so that when I'm doing, when I'm tying it off to finish, that will be up here and it'll be hidden. This edge is also kind of hidden, but <laughs> I just like to start at the finished edge. So I've overlapped and I'm stitching, hmm, let's see, just a running stitch. making sure to go through both layers, but not through the back. This part is open, so it's a sleeve. There we go. That looks good. I'm gonna be careful not to draw it up too tightly. And then I'm just going to secure my thread up here at the top. So I'll secure the knot here and then just Itty bitty stitches. My grandmother's quilting at least eight stitches per inch. I don't know how she did that. Yeah, I can tell I'm, just, I'm making my stitches a little big. Maybe you could do better or maybe you want to use the machine, use the sewing machine to do this step. 
I'll get up here to the top and then I'll secure my thread. For the hands, I'm using this Craft Stick Mini from Forster, but you can, they're the same as just a regular craft stick, so you can just cut the ends off. I like to just cut this in half, which means it's probably an inch or an inch and a quarter. Here, I'll measure. Here we go. Let's see. Yes. So that's an inch and a quarter each one. They don't even have to be the same. Only about a half an inch of the hand is going to stick out from the sleeve. And if you like, you could sand that and make that all nice and smooth which I have done in the past. I was worried about, oh, sharp edges, but not anymore. Okay, so now we have the sleeve. And remember, this sleeve goes on this side with the edge coming over like this, and this goes on this side. And what we're going to do is we're gonna gather up the cuff. I'm gonna be about maybe 3 eighths of an inch above the deepest part of the scallop. And then just kind of, it doesn't have to be perfect either. You see, when you gather it, it just kind of turns into mush there, see? So don't worry too much about it. Just gather it up. I'm using a doubled strand of quilting thread for this. Okay. That looks good. And now I'm going to open it up and find my little craft stick and place that in. I want the flat side of the stick to be um, the flat side of the stick. How do I explain it? I want the, the little overlap part here to be right in the center of the flat side of the stick. So that's the front. I have about a half an inch of the stick showing beyond the edge of the cuff. Now I'm going to wrap this. I'm wrapping it very securely. And you see how this is just, you know, it's not precise. So don't worry about that. And then I'm going to secure my thread on the inside. So the side that doesn't have this overlapping part. And then before I go on, I am going to lift up this little ruffle, the gathered ruffle on the inside, not on the outside, but the inside. And I am going to put a little bit of hot glue right here and then just press the cuff on the inside into the glue. There's a little bit of glue and then I'm just going to just want to make sure that the hand doesn't come out but I don't want the gathers on the front side of the sleeve to be smooshed into the glue. All right now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to this side. All right I've done both of my arms my sleeves and before I go on I like to add just a very small amount of stuffing to the front only of the sleeve. This helps to give the sleeve a little bit of dimension, but I don't want it on the inside because if you have stuffing on the inside, then the, the arms are sticking way out, you know, like, like this. And I prefer for them to lay a little bit, you know, against the dress like this. So I added a tiny puff of stuffing to the front edge of, that's the back, that's the front, just a little tiny bit. And these sleeves are just about ready to go. Now I'm gonna double check to make sure that I have, you know, the left on the left and the right on the right, and then the edges. And by the way, I forgot to mention this, but when I'm gathering up the sleeves around the hands, I try to make sure that this edge is, is a little bit further down. I don't want this right at the center. I wanna be able to see whatever is embroidered right there. And same thing on this one. So you can see how this is a little bit lower than the center. 
All right, so now I'm going to gather up the top edge, but be sure that you like the length of your sleeves. So use your eyes, you know, I don't think there's any particular proportion, you know. Now I'm going to gather up the top edge of the sleeve by hand with my quilting thread. Okay, I have a doubled strand of quilting thread. I'm actually going to gather up this left sleeve first. I like to secure the thread, secure the knot right there where everything overlaps. It's a little bit more to grab onto the knot, which is on the inside of the sleeve, and then I'm just gonna gather it up. There will be a collar here that covers up all these raw edges, so I'm not too concerned. I just wanna make sure I sew pretty close to the top, not more than a quarter of an inch. Just gather it up with a running stitch all the way around. There we go. And now I'm going to pull it tight and secure it. I'll set that one aside. Now I'll gather up the top edge of the right sleeve, which is the right sleeve as I'm looking at it, but actually her left sleeve. All right, here we go. I'm just going round and around with a running stitch. It doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be neat. Just get the job done. There we go, I'm back to the beginning. This is fraying a little bit, so I'm, I'm not cutting my quilting thread. I'm just trying to remove those frays. All right, now I'm going to secure this by sewing through it a few times. That looks good. Now I'm going to sort of place this sleeve on the side of the angel's dress. I like for this edge to be showing in the front, of course, right up next to the gathers in the top of the dress. I'm going to sew through those gathers. And then I'm going to take the second one that's already prepared and go through this one as well. You know, I try to make sure that these lines, these scallop lines, or maybe you have straight lines, or maybe yours aren't as strong of a contrast as mine. But in this case, with this particular handkerchief, since there is such a contrast, and since the scalloping is such an important design element, I wanna make sure that they're, you know, fairly similar. <laughs> Okay, I think that looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to just sort of um, sew back and forth to secure the sleeves a little better, and I'll be back. Okay, here's how she looks, and now I'm going to gather up some lace into a collar. This is 18 inches of about 5 eighths inch wide flat white lace. I'm gonna fold under one end Secure my thread like that, and then just gather up all the way along the top edge, just like that. There we go, I gathered up. And now I'm going to place this around her neck, join the ends in the back, distribute the, um, the gathers evenly, and then secure it in the back. That looks good. And now I'm going to tie a bow from this red and white striped baker's twine and um, place it underneath the lace here. Let's see, I want a lot of red. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of glue here and then just lift up the collar and glue this underneath. Sometimes I stitch through the lace, but in this case, I'm going to be adding um, a little holly leaf decoration here and it's pretty big, I think we're gonna be okay. Now I'm going to trim these ends and tie them off. 
I'm going to add one of these Jolie's Boutique. Can you see that? Jolie's Boutique. They're like um, Glitter Holly stickers. They are super cute. I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue to the back. And I'm going to just place that right there on her collar. I like the berry to be up. This is looking good. I like it so far. Now let's do her hair. I think I'm going to use this off-white. This is a loopy mohair. I'm going to leave a long tail and wrap around these two fingers. I'm spreading them pretty far apart. It's a it's a bigger head bead and so I'm going to you know spread my fingers a little bit farther apart. One. I'm going to do six times. One and two and three and four and five and six and then cut off a long tail. Take the tail, wrap around the center of the bundle, pick up the first tail and tie it off. I'm going to tie it off twice and then cut those ends. And this is what I call a figure eight bundle. I'm gonna make a second bundle. Nice long tail, one and two and three and four and five and six and... Wrap around the center, pick up the first end and tie it off. And then so I have two bundles. This one looks a little bit shorter. I'll use this one for the back. Let's see. That looks good. Okay. So one of your bundles will become the hair on the back of the bead and then the other one will be on the front. I'm going to spread out a circle of hot glue on the back of her head. I use a generous amount of glue and then I'm just going to cover the back of the head with the yarn. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just want to make sure it's covered and it shows a little bit on the sides and also that it's all glued. Like this is a little bit loose still so I'm going to add a little bit more glue and press that in. That looks good. Now the second bundle I'm going to be a little bit more careful with the front. So I'm going to add some glue right here to the top of the head in front of the hanging loop. Just like that. And if, um, you, if you haven't seen this technique and you're not familiar with it, I do have a video called Ruby's Hair Technique. Now I'm going to add some glue on the side here. Twist this toward the back and press it in like this. That looks good. And then I'll do the same thing over here. I'm going to squeeze some glue out in a line right there along the side of her head. Twist this toward the back and then press that into the glue. That looks good. Great. Now let's add her halo. I've already cut a piece of 20 gauge wire two and a half inches long. I'm going to use my thimble to get a nice round shape like this. And then I'll add some hot glue to each end and I will press those into the hair like this. It's kind of like a headband. That looks good. I've already made some wings. These are about four and a quarter inches apart. I mean, inches wide. And um, I have two options. I'm gonna, hmm, what do you think? Yeah, I think I like this one. 
I use my die cutting machine to cut out a four and a quarter inch scalloped circle folded it in half and then I sewed it with a red zigzag stitch. There's not much to it. I have a wing technique video as well so that if you don't have a die cutting machine there are alternatives to getting some good results. I'm going to squeeze out some glue right here at the top center of this wing piece. And then I'm pressing the back of her hair into that glue. I do try to center the head on the wings. Oh, okay, that looks good. I love the red. She doesn't have a lot of red in her dress, so I wanted to bring in some more red. Okay, let's have a look. What do you think? I'm gonna say she's done. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.